Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Game the video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red, Capricious Hellraiser deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and this was one of the cards I was most excited about going into the new expansion. So far it hasn't made a huge impact on Standard, but it also remains underexplored, so I'm hoping to change that with today's video. So the 6 mana 4 4 dragon has flying and gets a 3 mana discount if we have 9 or more cards in our graveyard, and our deck is very good at putting cards in the graveyard between all the discard and draw effects the cheap removal and even some fetch lands built into our mana base we can quickly get up to nine cards at which point we can cast hellraiser for just triple red which is incredibly efficient and then once it enters the battlefield we exile three cards at a random from our graveyard choose a non-creature non-land card from among them and copy it and cast the copy without paying its mana cost so provides immediate value when it enters the battlefield and we can even potentially cast a free portal to phyrexia if we manage to discard it earlier which can completely take over the game by making the opponent sacrifice three creatures and then every turn can also reanimate a creature from any graveyard which is another way of getting back the Hellraiser which will also mitigate the randomness of the Hellraiser's ability because once we start getting back Hellraiser and exiling more and more cards from our graveyard we're gonna get to the point where any card we cast will be the only card left in our graveyard so we're guaranteed to be able to copy it once again with Hellraiser once it enters the battlefield and our deck is also capable of hard casting the Hellraiser for six mana thanks to the many treasure tokens so that's another way of potentially casting Hellraiser with a smaller graveyard to kind of pinpoint whatever we want to get back and then we can also potentially copy it with our reflection of Kiki Jiki. Fable has excellent synergy with our dragon as we can first ramp into it using the shaman which can make treasure we can also discard up to two cards and then draw which can set up the discount on it and eventually of course our reflection can copy our creatures as well making hasty capricious hellraisers which can also get something back from the graveyard so that's our main game plan which is kind of play this fair mid-range control game and then eventually take over with the value we provide from our hellraiser and then to help with that we have some cheap removal including voltage surge as our one mana removal of choice since we can make some treasure tokens to potentially deal four damage with it as opposed to two then we have a braid to deal three damage to creatures or destroy artifacts cathartic pyre can also be quite flexible dealing three to a creature or planeswalker or we can use it to discard up to two cards and then draw that many which can also set up our hellraiser and then i'm playing a thrill of possibility over the two mana enchantment because thrill will immediately add another card to the graveyard the fact that it's an instant can also potentially help play around graveyard hate if we can at instant speed to discard a portal untap and then cast a hellraiser to maybe get portal back we can play around some sorcery speed graveyard hate and then at three man of course fable we've got two copies of rebel salvo don't have any equipment to give it a discount but still very good at three mana dealing five to a creature or planeswalker also removing indestructible so that can be relevant against some of the new phyrexians like mondrak which can potentially get an indestructible counter and then five damage is perfect for taking out shielded which is otherwise kind of tough to answer using our cheaper burn spells and then a two copies of Brotherhood's End can deal three to all creatures and planeswalkers or destroy artifacts with mana value three or less. Both modes quite useful as well. And then we have more sweeper effects with our Elder Dragon War, which can start by dealing two damage to each creature and each opponent. We can also skip ahead to maybe chapter two or three, where we can discard any number of cards and then draw that many and eventually make a 4-4 dragon token. So Elder Dragon War is also great at setting up our Capricious Hellraiser, as we'll be able to discard a ton of cards. And the saga itself will also end up in the graveyard, where we can maybe get it back for free with our dragon. And then we also have two copies of Koth, which is perfect in a mono red deck with a ton of basic mountains. The plus two finding another one, the minus three can act as removal, and that also scales into the late game, so it can be another answer to some larger creatures. And then a four copies of Big Score, which is great at potentially helping us hard cast a six mana Hellraiser, but by discarding and drawing, we also put a ton of extra cards in the graveyard to maybe get the three mana discount. Could even play Big Score, and then using the treasures, still cast a three mana Hellraiser afterwards, which can also come up, and also great to get back for free with our Hellraiser to provide more card advantage. And then our top end, of course, is Hellraiser and then Portal, which we mostly want to discard, but every now and then we can also hard cast it if we can make enough treasure. And then a mana base has a few fetch lands to just get a mountain game one life, put an extra card in graveyard for Hellraiser. Blast Zone can be an answer to enchantment, or we can maybe immediately activate it against an aggressive deck and deal with all one mana permanence. And then Crucible can also be channeled for more hasty 1-1s, one -ones. and then 17 mountains to make sure we have enough to go with Koth. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Okay, we're on the play, and seems keepable. Some cheap removal, maybe Elder Dragon War to refresh our hand if we don't need them. Opponent taking some aggressive mulligans, so typically points towards the blue-green poison deck, looking for a Rot Priest, in which case we have plenty of answers. So it could still be a poison deck. And getting ahead with Fable is going to be great. Although now it looks like a 5 color deck instead, or 4 color. So not sure what to expect. Alright, opponents got their own Fable. And what to discard. Maybe double a Braid, keep the cheaper Voltage Surge to deal with a Shaman and eventually Reflection. And then we can attack Big Score, discarding land. Although can do that in the opponent's turn as well, unless we want to play around a counter spell. Which doesn't seem likely. Okay, so it's a reanimator deck. Got it. That's gonna be scary. Next turn we can expect him to bring something back. Wedding announcement's fine. So, at this point, do we need Voltage Surge? It deals with a token. Probably don't need it. Okay, so I'm tempted to just discard my entire hand to Elder Dragon War. And then we could still maybe cast a Hellraiser for 3 mana. Okay, there it is. Two of them, in fact. Reflection ready to copy it. So all we're missing now is a portal to Phyrexia to put in our graveyard. Plenty of answers to the Reflection. And our opponent big scores. So the fact that they have both, one with a multiverse and Atraxa, makes me think they might be an Invoke Justice deck, which is why they have all these white trilands. Laid on Arms also nice when you have all planes in the mana base. And a Binding, can deal with Hellraiser. Okay, that was a setback. So we have six cards in Graveyard currently. Make that seven. So if I Thrill, then we should be able to cast a three mana Hellraiser. And uh, yeah, that's probably what we're going for. Can discard land since Shaman makes an extra treasure. In case we want to just Pyre, kill Reflection. Okay, so let's well, Hellraiser. Finds probably Salvo. Could Elder Dragon War, starting with 2 damage to wipe the board. Does kill our own Shaman, but also deals with a token. And then next turn we get the benefit from the second chapter as well. Yeah, that may be better here. So, would have been better off attacking first, maybe should have. Put on cycling headquarters. And a binding for Hellraiser, presumably. Could go for the Saga. Alright, Hellraiser down. So that's two of them exiled already. And then I don't think we need removal. Dig for more action. Can attack for four. Big score discarding Pyre and then still play Fable at the very least.
And at this point we have to think about whether to keep treasures to try and hard cast a portal if we find it, or keep extra lands in hand to discard to the second chapter. And it's a close call. If I play a land, I'll have six, seven, potentially eight mana, so we still won't be able to cast a portal next turn if we draw it. So I think I prefer discarding two lands at that point. I guess the Shaman attacking could maybe get us to 9, and we played land. Ooh, Eternal Wanderer. Can minus 4, or can just exile the dragon with a plus 1, which is even better. Very good against creature tokens. Alright, let's get rid of some lands. Not what we were hoping for, so might as well attack. And yeah, it's going to be a struggle to get past a Wanderer, with uh, creature tokens at least. At least if we find a portal, we force them to plus one on the portal itself to avoid reanimating their Atraxa. And now Blast Zone could be an answer in the long term. So, could Voltage Surge sacking treasure to kill the Shaman, get an attack in, which is probably fine. And then, if our plan is to eventually take a Blast Zone to 6, which would also destroy Double Binding, I guess we'll uh, just go face. So yeah, Blast Zone might actually be the missing piece here. Gonna take a second to get up to 6 counters, but eventually get back Double Hellraiser sounds lovely. Transformation also makes a lot of sense. So... Opponent's going to start making double striking samurai, one of which we can abrade. So up to three counters. Drew a Hellraiser. So I could play Hellraiser copy with reflection. And that has a good chance of being effective. Find Pyre. Could also damage Planeswalkers. And then we would be able to finish off Eternal Wonder, so yeah. That works for me. Is that all? And then I might want to braid one of their creatures first to increase the density of spells. Although Big Score could still potentially be a better draw. So sure, we'll just uh, copy Hellraiser. And then Salvo could also just deal with our Planeswalker now. And then we can just attack face. Hang on to the Abrade. Okay. So we're looking good. Although let's see if our opponent can stabilize here. Two cards in hand, one left, maybe an Invoke Justice can save them. Nope, never mind, Chaotic Transformation, so let's kill the creature in response. Although it'll still get an enchantment here, which can maybe save them. So possible the only creature in the deck is Atraxa. And their enchantment's simply a bitter union, so that's not going to be enough to survive. Awesome, looks like we got there, just in the nick of time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems reasonable. Can Thrill discard Portal. And then Elder Dragon War can help us find a Hellraiser. Turn 
turn one planes. And veterans, so some sort of life gain deck. Okay. Can thrill at instant speed, so we'll wait. Green white. And there's our Hellraiser, perfect. So what's our sequencing now? Just play an Overlook, keep up Cathartic Pyre to maybe kill any creatures in response to the life gain trigger before they potentially grow out of range. Sure. And then next turn set up our Elder Dragon War. And then we should be pretty close to a 3 mana Hellraiser. Also have the option of discarding and drawing with Pyre if nothing else shows up. Okay, opponent is three callers after all, wedding announcements. Okay, so chapter one from Elder Dragon War should be effective. And then for now, maybe Pyre, discarding Salvo and a land. And then I think I hang on to Blast Zone, in case we'll need it later. Okay. So we'll start from chapter 1, and then next turn with chapter 2 we'll be able to play our Hellraiser even after discarding a portal to maybe cast that for free. Mondrak makes sense. Could still kill it even through Indestructible thanks to our Salvo. And of course portal would be perfect to get here. So we'll discard big score portal. If I discard the lands, we're less likely to hit Portal. So I could also only discard Portal, keep the big score in hand. Uh, although, never mind, we do need to discard a second card to get the discount. So yeah, big score Portal, or maybe hang on to big score and just land Portal. Another Hellraiser, okay. So play Hellraiser. If I big score first, discarding a land, play a land, I could still play Hellraiser afterwards. Although, don't think that's really necessary. No portal, but a salvo to deal with Mondrak. Still pretty useful. Okay. Pass it back. So now we'll have some flying dragons to apply pressure with. Can cast a six mana Hellraiser as well. Rabble Rousing, okay. And then with our saga going to the graveyard, we get another chance of getting it back with Hellraiser to maybe wipe the board once again. So currently 6 mana Hellraiser, if I big score discarding a land, then I would be able to play a 3 mana Hellraiser, is that worth it? I think we just cast a 6 mana one to make it more likely for Portal to be our hit. And there it is, okay. Wipe the opponent's board, attack for 4. And then next turn, threaten to get back Mondrak. There's another one. 5-5. Five, five. And a Phantom. Okay. Elder Dragon War could make two tokens right away thanks to Mondrak. And we can also double the treasures now, which is pretty exciting. So let's start there. Hold on, let's see if I channel Crucible, would we have lethal? So we've got Abe coming through in the air. Yeah, not quite. So I think it can go. All right. Well, we have a lot of great synergy with Mondrak here, Fable as well. So do I just Koth kill Mondrak? That seems like the safest move. Have five mountains in play, just enough. I'm ready to fight. Attack for twelve. It. 
and pass it back. So Rapo needs a pretty amazing turn. They can take out Koth. Ooh, Battalion, okay. So that is 11 power here. Luckily for us, not quite enough to enable Rabble Rousing. Hive to make more tokens, but that's not until next turn. So we should have them with our flyers next turn. Can block Battalion, get it back with Portal as well. And there it goes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems okay. A little bit uh, light on interaction, but being on the play with a Fable hopefully makes up for it. Opponent on Esper. Alright, second Hellraiser, so really want to get that discount going. Our Shaman probably not long for the world. Alright, get to untap. Portal's an easy discard. And then maybe one big score can go. Attack, and then we can big score in the opponent's turn. And then we're up to two cards in Graveyard. This will add two more. But we can potentially hard cast a six mana Hellraiser thanks to the treasures. Opponent does nothing. If uh, Shieldred shows up, we want a big score in response so we don't take a bunch of damage. Okay, opponent does nothing. Still gonna big score, probably discarding a Fable at this point. There could be a board wipe incoming, in which case it would be nice to get a portal in play, so we can at least get our Hellraiser back. With four cards in Graveyard, if they wipe the board, this will add one more. This could also put one more in Graveyard. So, interesting spot. I think going for Hellraiser here is fine, even if it does get countered. And then wait on the Courtyard until after playing Hellraiser. And then if we ever get to combine Hellraiser with Reflection, that would be great too. Okay, there's our portal. On an empty board, so no immediate effect, but it does give us some insurance going into the late game. So yeah, I'm curious to see what our opponent's plan is. For now we can pass. Binding, yeah, that can exile our portal. Too bad. And since it's a token, even if we somehow destroy the binding with a blast zone, we wouldn't be getting it back. Celestus. That we can destroy with a Brotherhood's End, if we'd like. And I go for the Throat Kills Reflection. Okay. Bit of a setback. With three cards in Graveyard. I think we just uh, take our turn. And then if I attack for six, make a treasure. If I want to end to destroy Celestus, I would also lose my treasure, so we would want to cash those in first. So maybe we want to do that before attacking and making one more treasure. And then I could big score discarding a land at this point. Could also just cast another Hellraiser, put the pedal to the metal. And then we're guaranteed to get another Fable here. That might be okay too. Could be overextending into a Sweeper, but we would present lethal next turn since opponents is at 10. So we'll go for it. All 
All right, let's see if they have a depopulate here. Just a soul transfer, exiling Hellraiser, that's okay. What to discard? Pyre, maybe. Could also get rid of Thrill since we have a big score anyway. All right, attack for eight. Don't have any haste creatures we can draw off big score. And then might be okay just main phasing it. Discard Voltus Surge. And a portal. Well, I guess Crucible is technically a haste creature, so we could have actually attacked for lethal had we channeled it. Oh well, can still make them end of turn to recover from a sweeper, if not hardcast portal. Sounds good. And our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. No cheap removal, but Elder Dragon War can maybe catch us back up. Opponent on an oil counter deck. So our hand's got a lot of discard and draw effects. So Portal can go to the graveyard and then hopefully find a Hellraiser to eventually get it back. Another Reservoir. And the Skull Bomb, so they can get a ton of oil counters going. But for now we're not under any immediate pressure at least. So both Reservoirs get a counter, and a Synthesizer, kind of digging the cheap artifact vibe here. Anointer they wouldn't be able to play. So their opponent cycles Skull Bomb, and another Monumental Facade. There's Hellraiser, perfect, so Fable into either Elder Dragon War or Big Score should help us get closer to Hellraiser. Especially Big Score can let us cast a 6-mana Hellraiser. Although for now, no creatures in sight for a portal to take out. Possible our opponent wants to one-hit KO us with uh, the Silex. If you remove 10 oil counters from permanence, it can deal 10 damage. So that may be part of their game plan. For now an Ambassador which can easily become indestructible. Good combo with Reservoir and Facade. Now we have Salvo, which can remove indestructible, and of course Portal would also be an answer. So Portal can go and maybe a land or Voltage Surge. I guess we could attack if they block make indestructible. We can respond with a Voltage Surge, which could be good enough. All right, land can go then. Both is not bad either, so I'll attack. Button blocks, let damage happen, and in response to the ability we can take it out. And then now I'm tempted to just play Koth and start plussing, even though that delays our Hellraiser plan slightly. Having an active Planeswalker is never bad. Curious to see what's next. A concession? Okay. Well, interesting deck from our opponent, but it didn't seem to quite work out here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand's got a lot of removal, a bit of discard and draw to hopefully find some more action spells. So, we'll try it. Well, let's see what we're up against. Hopefully a creature deck where all these removal spells can shine. Green-white, and looks like token, maybe poison. So Brotherhood Zen's gonna be good. A Braid maybe not so much. Salvo can maybe still answer Mondrak. So let's discard a Braid. And now Portal we can easily get rid of. 
Elder Dragon War, also quite good in the matchup, I assume. So we'll pass. Thrill Discard Portal. And then next turn we can start from Chapter 1. So it is Naya Tokens after all, with an Ourobrasks Forge. Well, I guess that's an artifact we could have blown up with a raid. Although now, Brotherhood's End destroying artifacts can also deal with the tokens as well as Forge. So, interesting spot here. Do we Brotherhood's End? Do we start with Fable, maybe? Get that going. And then next turn, destroying artifacts won't affect the Shaman token. And then keep this for later to maybe wipe the board once again. Sure. Wouldn't be surprised if Mondrak shows up to double the Forge token right away. In which case, we'll potentially still be able to salvo. That's going to be a King Darien instead. So that's going to allow an attack. Take five. So Portal can go and... Do I still need a Rebel Salvo? Maybe not so much. Keep digging towards Hellraiser. Alright, there it is. So we're very close to a 3 mana one. So yeah, let's Brotherhood and destroying artifacts. And then I can attack, or I guess just Pyre first, doesn't matter. And then next turn we can cast our 3 mana Hellraiser. So they potentially could have given up King Darien to make the tokens indestructible, but the sequencing worked out okay. Now a Gala Greeters into another Forge. So they get some immediate value of the Greeters. And we picked up Koth. Alright, so we've got quite a few options here. Can start with Hellraiser, with 6 mana, up to 7 with a Shaman. I could Koth, get a Mountain, and then Hellraiser as well, which would also be okay. Could take out Gala Greeters. Maybe starting with Hellraiser and then see what we hit is the way to go. And Rebel Salvo first Thrill can Salvo the Gala Greeters. Attack with her Shaman. And then Koth can start plussing. And then we're also pretty close to just hard casting a portal once we make a few more treasures. Lunar Veteran can gain some life back that they lose with Hive. And there's Mondrak. So our suspicions were correct, but uh, had to fire off for Salvo a little early. So Koth takes two this way. And then Koth can finish off Mondrak still. Although they may make it indestructible. In which case, Salvo is our only answer, or Portal if their board is small enough. So yeah, Mondrak's now indestructible, but our opponent's at 8. So double Hellraiser will do it here, even without doing anything else. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Get to level up here as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. 
Turn to Pyre, can always discard and draw. And if not, we can clear a path for our Shaman token. And eventually Reflection will be great with her Hellraiser. Blue-white, soldiers, okay. So we finally get to see that matchup. And we don't have a Sweeper in hand yet, which is potentially a concern. But uh, Blastone could also come in handy. Not going to show it to them just yet. Hang on to Cathartic Pyre. Hopefully Thalia doesn't show up, since we won't be able to kill it and then set up Fable next turn. Which is what we really want. So for now, just take two. And Danik. Okay, so I could kill Danik. It's not the scariest creature necessarily, but it does block our Shaman. Brutal Cathar could also exile the Shaman. So I'm not expecting it to necessarily stick around. And then Salvo can deal with some of the three mana soldiers. So sure, we'll kill Denik. And a Brotherhood's End was a great draw. So still going for Fable, but now we have a bit of insurance if our opponent starts going wide. It's going to be a Sky Strike. Okay, so no Brutal Cathar means we at least get to cash in the Shaman for a treasure token. Although Salvo killing Officer might be the play. Pretty far from 3 mana Hellraiser, so I probably need to cast a big score to get to 6 mana. So we'll uh, just discard the one. And then I can Salvo Officer attack and start pulling ahead on mana. And then next turn with another attack, I could cast a 6 mana Hellraiser. Siege Veteran. We'll maybe leave behind some 1 1 tokens if we eventually wipe the board. But that's fine. And Koth also a decent draw. So we've got a ton of great options. Fable's giving the opponent some pawns here. Not sure what 1 mana instant they could be playing. But uh, I think the plan is just attack, and then Hellraiser is guaranteed to get Salvo to maybe take out Veteran, or we could go for a big score. So, a lot of great options. Opponent takes it, and uh, yeah, let's add a dragon to the board. And then with an empty graveyard, it means if I big score next turn, I'm guaranteed to get it back with a Hellraiser if we copy it with Reflection. So yeah, let's just Salvo, try and kill a Siege Veteran, although it's possible they have a protection spell here. And yeah, Lauren's escape. The Indestructible doesn't matter since Salvo would remove it, but the Hexproof means our removal spell still fizzles. So officer up to 4 power, attacks, we'll take it. And then hope they don't have a Brutal Cathar, although if they had one, we might have seen it earlier on the Shaman. So just another 2 mana Denik. So if I big score, discarding Overlook, we'll be able to get another big score back, which is a lot of extra mana. Okay, so... Copy Hellraiser, and then by discarding Portal now, we're setting up Hellraiser getting back Portal next turn. Although, what is this? Opponent maybe with a response? Nope. Big score, discard Portal. Hardcasting Portal could also be an option here, realistically, although we found another one. So, attack with our Hasty Dragon, and uh, that's probably it. We are at 9, so have to be a little careful. Could also decide to just Brotherhood's End, in which case I might have wanted to attack with a Shaman, but at 9 life I still feel relatively safe. Could have gone for a Thrill, and then try and hit my Land Drop for the turn, but I'll hang on to the Treasures instead. 
Okay, reinforcements. If they follow that up with Harbin, they could give the team flying and then we could be in trouble. It's a big draw step coming up. Although next turn I could cast a 6 mana Hellraiser, get Portal back. Veteran to pump the team. Should still be able to survive just about here. Okay, so if I block Siege Veteran with Hellraiser, jump the 5 powered creature, I take 8 down to 1. So that seems fine. And then next turn, copy Hellraiser. Um, let's see, does Denik mess up or interaction in some way? Can be the targets of spells or abilities, but this simply exiles. Three cards at random, so we're not targeting anything. Okay. So block Siege Veteran, and then Chump Officer, take 8. Yeah, on the one side we want to brother its end first, but that would kill Reflection. Whereas if I copy Hellraiser for Portal, they can just sank the smaller stuff. So it's kind of tricky. Although we'll still be left with Koth, which we can use as removal. So maybe Instant Speed Portal is still the way to go, so we have a Hellraiser to block with. Sure. So let's pass. Could get a little awkward if they drew another resolute reinforcements to play at instant speed in response to the portal. Possible I should have put an upkeep stop. But now I kind of want them to cash in the Valiant Veteran, although they don't really have a reason to, since they would already present lethal here. Alright, free portal. Opponent has to sacrifice three creatures. And then we have two good blockers. Okay. So we can block officer with a token. And leave our opponent with nothing. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, it's not gonna take long for Hellraiser and Portal to completely take over. Sweet, so yeah, I'm glad we got to showcase a game against Blue-Eyed Soldiers, which remains one of the most popular decks in Best of One, also one of the most successful decks with the highest win rates even after the new set release, so it still remains a very good deck to rank up on the ladder, but I think this mono -red deck has a decent matchup against Soldiers between all the cheap spot removal and the couple sweepers, and then our end game also involves getting back Portal to wipe the board and present some large blockers in the form of Flying Dragons, so that's a pretty good game plan to have against Blue-Eyed Soldiers, just gotta hope to dodge a turn to Thalia, which can sometimes be disruptive enough to the point where the soldiers can still take over. So yeah, pretty happy with how this deck turned out. Hellraiser is one hell of a card and still remains to be explored to its full extent. But for now, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.